Do you enjoy our podcast and the guests we bring you? Since 2019, Matt and his team have done their very best to give you amazing shows each week. If you feel like our show has helped you to be a better investigator, or maybe even inspired you to become an investigator, please let us know. We're looking for testimonials. Drop Matt an email with a recorded 20 to 30 seconds of you talking about this podcast. You can also email him something verbal about the website. His email is S at SatellitePI.com. And if you really feel blessed for having this content, consider supporting Matt and our show by joining Investigators Toolbox. You really have to see version 2.0. And at just 49 cents a day, it's a no-brainer. Now let's jump in to this week's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. Today we have a special show. Mark Gillespie is back and we're talking about working death cases that were initially ruled suicide. Oh boy. Mark explains how he got into this niche selection of investigations and what to look for if this type of case comes across your desk. So please welcome Mark Gillespie and your host, private investigator, Matt Spare. And welcome everyone to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. This is Matt Spare, your host. Today, I'm I'm honored and happy to have an old friend back, uh, somebody we haven't talked to in a while. I want to welcome Mark Gillespie back to the program. Mark, how are you? I'm well. How are you, Matt? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So for those who don't Mark, know Mark, he's uh, based out of Texas, I believe, right? Texas? And- Austin. Austin, right? And uh, he's has made uh, quite a career on dealing with forensics and death investigations and and really, um, you know, doing a lot of court appointed uh, investigative work. And I asked Mark to come on today to talk about um, death investigations and kind of give his take on um, law enforcement and how they handle investigating homicides and not considering all possibilities and why an investigator would be important on doing that. So uh, again, Mark, I'm, I'm so happy to have you back. It's been a while. Uh, why don't you just tell folks a little bit uh, more about yourself that I didn't cover here that uh, if, for folks who don't know you. Okay. Well, always good to be here with you, Matthew. Um, yeah. You're a great, great friend, great colleague, and uh, done a lot for our profession and I appreciate everything that you do. And um Enjoy being on your show here. Uh, I've been in, uh, I started my career in, in in the Air Force. I was a special agent in the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Uh, spent a career doing that. Um, we, we conducted felony investigations for the Air Force Department of Defense and, um, you know, Air Force interests. Uh, got my master's in forensics at George Washington. So I was always interested in forensic science. Uh, got that in 83, and that was really before forensic science was a household name. Right. Um, few few people knew anything about forensics at that time. Um, I retired from the Air Force, Was became the APD, Austin Police Department Crime Laboratory Director. Uh, did that for a number of years, and I moved on to uh, start a forensic science undergraduate degree program at St. Edwards University here in Austin. Um while I was teaching, uh, I've got my PI license, and for years, I, I for a number of years, I kind of struggled with what did I, you know, what did I want to be when I grow up as a PI, and right. I just didn't know what, um, you, you know, what I wanted to specialize in. So I kind of did it all, just like we did in OSI as special agents. We just kind of ran every investigation, and um, so finally, I just honed it down to. Um, you know, basically a couple areas, criminal defense and uh, forensic science consultations. And, and that's what I've been doing for, for many years and enjoy right. it, love it. And uh, so that's what I'm doing now. I've, I, I, I do a lot of court appointed cases here and, and uh, throughout Texas, uh, you know, they don't pay well, but I get a lot of satisfaction helping, um, you know, helping the justice system. And uh, helping people that need the help to ensure they get a fair, a fair go at it in the in the criminal justice system. So sure, sure. that's what I enjoy how, doing. How have you seen like technology change over the years? I mean, what you know, you've been doing this for for a bit, and um, 
there's obviously has been a change in, in things we can do now that that we couldn't do before and and new technology that that's available what's the one thing that stands out the most is like wow i'm glad we have this well the it's interesting that you say that because I was having a conversation um, with one of my investigators just two days ago. And, you know, we were doing some heavy duty uh, internet searches, uh, you know, social media searches, uh, you know, looking for people, looking for things, looking for information. And, and I got to thinking back in my days as a special agent in OSI, I, I, I compare what our abilities are today with technology, you know, automation, internet, databases, right. uh, quick access to information uh, compared to what we had in 1979 when I got started, you know, uh, we, it, there's really, it, it, it's hard to compare. I, I mean, when you compare it, it's night and a night and day's difference. So mm -hmm. it's incredible we're we're playing on a different playing field, a different landscape, and uh, I think for the investigator, um, I just I, I don't know what we would have. I I just can't imagine my world back in '79. You know, with with computers, we, we did things the hard way, right? Yeah. Um, but we still got the got a good result. But I just think it probably took took longer. It was harder. And, um, uh, so to answer your question, I think, I think, uh, the advent of, of, uh, of the internet of computers did, you know, digital tools, right. uh, has, has been huge, uh, from a, from a investigative standpoint, uh, in terms of Furthering investigations, you know, forensic science has has really blossomed tremendously, yeah. um, and and technology has, of course, has um, uh, has had a great impact on on the furtherance of forensic science in our profession. Yeah, uh, you know, DNA. You look at the. I make I make the argument television, right? CSI, all those like programs that that really open up the doors for people to understand what forensic science is. It isn't just a bunch of nerds sitting around laughing about, you know, the coefficient of this and that, <laughs> you know, like there's more to it. Right. Absolutely. You know, yeah. OJ back in 84, 85, that, that broke the glass ceiling on, on crime scene investigation on forensic yeah. science. And uh, you know, it, it's never been the same since then. It's, it yeah. just has opened our eyes uh, you know, you, you look at true crime on, on the internet, uh, that, that is so that captures everyone's attention, uh, yeah. more so than, than many other things. So yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's amazing how, you know, we go to, you know, reading Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the, the you know, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys and all this other stuff. And, 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 you know, that's, that's our youth, right? That's what that tells us what the investigative mind has and can, and can do. And now you start factoring in technology and cool stuff. And somewhere in the middle, <laughs> you get a good investigator. Uh, you could throw the Jetsons in there too, <laughs> with all the technology, right? right? Yeah. Who, who would have thought we still don't have the flying cars yet, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe right. it's around the corner, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's, it, it's it's good stuff, and I think also the the ability uh, for information sharing, I think, is a game changer too. Like it's almost like the profession elevates itself because there's just so much content out there, so many folks like yourself who who dedicate, you know, time and resources to training others on how to do certain things. Um, and you know, it was always done. You know, in the last twenty five years, thirty years, you go to conferences, right? Now it's virtual conferences. Actually, we're recording this one. Today, as a virtual conference is going on, that I gotta when we're done, I gotta tap in and get a part of for for Nally, um, right? You know, and it's just like consistently, there's there's content that's uh, that's out out there, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing, really uh, really cool. It, it definitely elevates the profession, I think, in my opinion. So good stuff. I, I agree. Yeah.
And, uh, you know, we, we were trying to figure out what to talk about today. And we were talking about, you know, do we talk about junk science? Do we talk about murder investigations? And the murder investigation one because, hey, it's murder and it's always more interesting. But, man, we, we are going to have you on again at some point and talk about that because the, it, the, the downfall of technology and, and um, you know, having all the things at our fingertips is that folks come up with these ideas on how to do certain things and, and create these sciences that are very sexy in a courtroom, but could be questionable as well. Right. So that's, that's something that, uh, you know, is, uh, it's, it's a lot to swallow for sure. I agree. Yeah. It's all, uh, it's all interesting to see, uh, how, how it goes. I mean, I remember myself being back at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York, um, you know, that's my alma mater. And, you know, I got out of there in 1995. So, you know, you had thrown, um, you know, the OJ thing out there. I mean, you know, like I was square in the middle of all that. <laughs> you know, the white Bronco was 94, right? Uh, Henry Lee, you know, was a professor at John Jay College prior to, to getting involved with that case um, and was very well respected um in fact i was talking to rob freed last night um at a society of professional investigators event we were talking about dr lee and just his impact on um you know on the industry and, and things like that and and forensics is definitely uh it's it's a very necessary um cool part of what we do here so um it, it's been very interesting to see how the popularity has grown and how the technology has grown into it and, uh, you know, and it, it, it helps and hurts on the murder investigation stuff, which we're going to dive into in a little bit. Right. Yeah. I think I misspoke. I think I said 1984 OJ. It was, we'll give you, you a pass. You made me 94, <laughs> 95. Yeah. Thank you. It's okay. All, all, all the years they, they kind of meld together. So I just had a birthday. I'm losing my memory. It's all right, man. It's all good. Um, Listen, I'm I'm not much younger than you, so <laughs> I'm I'm heading down that, that road too. Um, but it, it's all good, and you know, it, I tell you though, it's weird though because like for cases I work on, as much as we joke about like losing memory and stuff, like there are certain times where I'll, like I'll be in certain areas of of New York City, even I'm just like yeah, I worked on a case over here, worked on a case over there. I can tell you the exact fact pattern and everything that happened there, and uh, yeah, I'm sure I was a whip. But, you know, remind me to pick up my laundry on Tuesday at four o'clock and I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. Where did I put my keys? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we're going to jump out and take a quick break. And when we come back, I really want to dive into, you know, the investigating uh, murders uh, slash suicides, you know, like the differences between that and and some of the um, some of the reasons that an investigator uh, you know, privately, you know, could really help that situation and, and really help determining into uh, what happens. So everybody sit tight and we'll be right back. Have you heard about the 2023 Slick Conference? You're not going to want to miss this event in Augusta, Georgia on March 13th and 14th. The conference will feature practical topics, outstanding speakers, and happy hour networking sessions, plus more. There are 16 CEUs available for Georgia and 12 CEUs available for South Carolina. Topics include practical aspects of defensive shooting, justifiable use of force with a taser, fire investigations, courtroom deposition testimony, how to navigate open records request, human trafficking, recognition and reporting, and so much more. Learn all about it at cga-solutions.com. You guys have been hearing uh, for a long time about how much I love Cross Tracks, but now you're going to hear from somebody else. So we got George Gerges here. George is a member and a user of Cross Tracks. George, tell me real quickly what you love about Cross Tracks. The simplicity of using it and the ability to customize everything that you could do with Cross Tracks is awesome. It actually allowed me to take the way that I do my business and implement it into their system. And not only am I able to manage 10 or 15 cases, I'm able to manage 50 to 100 cases with the same effort. Fantastic. So Cross Tracks, um, the case management system, they are SOC 2 certified. Basically, that's an encryption, really an upgrade. They're the only ones out there that are doing it. So please support this great sponsor that supports our show. Uh, check them out. The links are in the show notes. Cross Tracks, if you're an investigator, you should be using them today. Check out the PI Institute of Education at piinstitute.com. 
Since 1989, Kelly Riddle has been teaching on subjects such as surveillance, nursing home investigations, insurance fraud, domestic investigations, hidden assets, and accident scene investigations. The PI Institute of Education is a featured learning partner in the investigatorstoolbox.com. So check out the free content on the site, then visit the Institute for more great savings on additional classes. Satellite Investigations is the premier investigation resource in New York State. Founder Matthew Spear was named PI Magazine's Investigator of the Year. If you need investigative assistance in New York State, visit their site at SatellitePI.com. Get results, not excuses. Looking for an insurance agent that puts you first? Every PI business is different. That's why OREP Insurance can shop multiple markets to ensure you get the best coverage to meet your unique business needs. OREP's model is business by the golden rule, and for over 20 years, they've built their business by putting their clients first. So come enjoy a fast online application and same-day certificates of insurance at OREP.org. OREP has coverage for armed investigators, executive protection, and even has a separate policy for security firms. The application takes less than five minutes, so visit OREP.org today. OREP.org. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. I'm here with Mark Gillespie from Austin, Texas. Mark, welcome back to the program. Thank you. All right. So before we took our break, we uh, had teased... Uh, doing work on murder investigations. And this is something that you're passionate about. And, uh, you know, you, you've, you've seen your fair share over the years. And um, you know, we wanted to talk about the private investigators role in all that. Um, so let's, let's dive in, man. So what, what, what's been your experience in dealing with this? Well, my experience has been uh, mostly in the realm of court appointed cases, uh, capital murder, murder investigations. Um, you know, clients of all ages from from young teens to, you know, 75, 80 years old. Uh, suicides, I've dealt a lot, of, dealt with a lot of cases involving, uh, uh, you know, questionable manner of death determinations. And, and that's something I really like getting involved in. Right. Um, you know, many times when we see cases of uh, a person you know who's died alone the police get called uh, they respond they examine the scene um, you know there's nothing that's in many cases that's really obvious in terms of uh, someone else being involved uh, when you have a dead body uh, you know, then the coroner or the medical examiner rules the investigation, uh, rules the, the the manner of death as, you know, as a suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, in many instances, and this gets so frustrating, but in many instances, you have the the the, the medical examiner making a a a ruling immediately upon completion of the uh, autopsy. Uh, without any input or investigation from the law enforcement agency, and and I have to tell you, there's it is it is it is not right for a medical examiner's office to to do that in many instances without the benefit of a thorough investigation. Right. Why do you think that? Uh, we see so. What's that? Why do you think that happens? Why do you think they 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 make their wrongs so quickly? I think they um, they just want to get through it. They're so sure for themselves of what they think happened, uh, you know what what they have on a on the table before them appears to be cut and dry. When in fact, in many instances, it's not. Um, but but you know, I've gotten involved in several cases where I I have been hired to challenge the ruling and. Uh, and I've been successful in, and this is a long drawn out process, but I've been successful in, in getting the medical examiner to, to change the ruling from suicide to undetermined or suicide to accident. Right. 
um, and suicide to homicide. So, and, and that's very, um, that, that's extremely satisfying when you, when you're able to do that. And it's also very, uh, it's very refreshing when you have the some in the medical examiner community that will back off and say, Hey, maybe, maybe we didn't look at all the facts of this case and, and we made a rush to judgment. So, uh, uh Oh, Gillespie's here. <laughs> better go dot my eyes and cross my T's. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> thanks. <laughs> but it, but, but, you know, when you have a death investigation, um, and, and when an autopsy is performed, it's, it's, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have right. a thorough investigation that's completed, you know, all the I's dotted, the T's crossed, no stone left unturned. That's extremely important. Yeah. And when we think about it, you know, our families, our parents, our, our family members, uh, we are doing a disservice to them if we don't if we don't go that extra step to to gain all the information right. to 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 try to turn over every rock um so and what, it's what would you suggest um like the, the the average investigator that that gets a phone call from somebody and says hey my loved one you know uh passed away they're saying it's suicide but eh, i think there's something up here like how would you suggest that investigator handles that call um appropriately that's a good very good question i think there's two things number one um you know many pis don't have the experience uh, and this is not a negative statement but many many pis don't have the experience of of conducting a death investigation and knowing what goes into that and then what goes into um you know, the performance of an, of an autopsy and what's reported and what the autopsy report says and what an autopsy report doesn't say. So I think a PI, if they're, if they, if they get a call uh, and, and their services are requested to assist, um, I think they, they need to reach out to someone uh, like myself, like Dean Beers in Colorado, yeah, like, like a handful of others who, yep. who are, very skilled and adept to Rachel, uh, yeah, Rachel Roberts too. Another one. Yeah. Just yeah. They know what they're doing uh, for sure. That, that, that know that world and know the ins and outs and know how to, how to go that down that, that, that winding path. Right. Uh, Cause it's an extreme challenge. Um, yeah. But that, so that's what I would recommend is that they, that they reach out, get some information, get some assistance uh, to kind of plot a course on, on where to go. Um, that That's what I would recommend. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's tough. You know, like, a, you know, people always have an idea of what investigators do and can do, you know, again, we're going back to television and, and whatnot. Um, there's such a, a, a wide spread of what a, an investigator could do and i always recommend to people like find what you're good at and just stick to those few things and then you know make lots of friends <laughs> go to conferences and meet folks like mark that are good at doing that kind of stuff and when you get those phone calls don't turn them away put them point them in the right direction you know and and uh yeah help them get what they need to do and everybody wins in that uh, case you know know what you're good at and stick to it that's, that's, that's my yeah. motto yeah you hit the nail on the head. In fact, I, I created a presentation years ago called finding your niche mm. because I had a hard time finding my niche. And then I find it finally came down to just, as you said, yeah. do what you're good at and then, and, 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 and go after it. Yeah. Um, so that's, 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 that's a great recommendation for, yeah. for all of us. Yeah. And it, there's, there really is just so much that we can do as investigators um, you know, I have no law enforcement background. It's just the way the cards played out for me. I would never pretend to try and take a case, a murder case like that. It's just, it's not my thing, you know, and, and that's okay, you know, but, you know, making sure that I point that person in the right direction. Um, I can sleep at night knowing that I tried to help the person and, and I don't have that's to worry good. about it. You know, it's all, uh, it's all good stuff. And, um, uh, you know, it, there are a lot of, 
pressures too when it when it comes to these um these murder investigations like there's politics involved in it sometimes you know i, I recall like uh, working on a case in new york city that was a high profile motor vehicle accident that involved some criminal negligence and it, it was uh, involved a uh, a member of the hasidic community who had been killed and um not only he would be killed his family would be killed it was like a horrible horrible accident but the politics involved in that the pressure that was put on uh, by the humi- uh, Hasidic community to the politicians and the politicians then turning the screws on the law enforcement to like get it done was almost like hindering <laughs> the, the the investigators ability to do what they needed to do because there was so much pressure on trying to close the case out. So like you got to factor that stuff into it too sometimes, you know, and then, you know, let's factor in the remnants of COVID, right? We're through it, but we're not really through it, right? So it's, you know, why was this moved so quickly? Why was this not looked further? Well, you know, we got 900 people a day dying in New York, you know, and uh, we're just going to say it was COVID, you know, and, you know, for somebody who wanted to bump somebody off, maybe they, uh, <laughs> maybe they took care of business and, and, ooh, it's COVID, you know, you don't know. Right? You know, definitely. Uh, I, mean, I- couldn't agree more i think i think politics uh is a huge obstacle that many of us play uh, in trying to get our foot in the door get things uh, uh to have things reviewed to to draw the attention to you know some of our some of our cases uh you're absolutely right yeah and then you got to figure in pride too right dealing with the medical examiner hey you made a mistake i don't make mistakes i'm a doctor that's huge (laughs) you know yeah Yeah. i I went to medical school and did all my residencies i don't make mistakes it's like "Mm." (laughs) here look science says otherwise you know and and dealing with that it's uh it's a tough tough thing to do to get somebody to change a report i can only imagine the struggle on that well and, and it's very hard but what but what you have to do like on a suicide case uh, or 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 a, a death where you think a um, it it may not have been suicide. You're questioning it. You know you've got to do. Uh, you know you, you've got to look at uh, victimology, suicidology. Uh, you've got to do a thorough thorough investigation of that individual. Uh, you know his his relationships, family, personal friends, girlfriends um you know financial issues i mean it's a it's a huge list but if you don't do that you're you're missing a lot of critical information about that individual that that could either warrant the determination of suicide or go against it um but but what you're trying to do with that investigation is give the medical examiner kind of a, a backdrop of that person's life to help them understand is this a homicide or is this a suicide yeah uh, or and then you know what it may some be somewhere in between we we can't figure this one out so undetermined uh, you know I I think there's many cases that they just they just check the block they you know even though they can't figure it out but it doesn't you know, it's either a homicide or it's a suicide. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh pretty cut and dry, <laughs> I guess at yeah. times and at times it, it's not. So, you know, which is why you need someone to really um, with the expertise to really dig in and, and, uh, and put it, you know, pull it all apart. So like over the years, obviously you've, you've, you've done what you've done. You've got your experience. I mean, what have been some of the, the resources that you've tapped into to get better at doing what you're doing. I know you do a lot of training and you offer courses on this stuff and Dean and Karen do that, that as well. But what, what are some of the, uh, the other resources that you have found helpful over the years? Well, there's a, a good question. There's a couple. It's dealing with people like yourself, people who have a, a brain, uh, common sense, good judgment, uh, who have who have many 
valuable life experiences so I can learn many things from people like yourself. Uh, you look at our community, there there are many, many people out there that, uh, I mean, we have a, a target-rich environment for uh, expertise and uh, experience and uh, you know, you, you you mentioned the word pride and ego a little bit ago, and the PIs that don't succeed or that don't really get a lot of good jobs, in many cases, are the ones that think they can do it all themselves, and 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 that basically they find themselves on an island. Yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, one of the biggest things we can do uh, is is you know, drop our ego, drop our pride and reach out to people that that have a wealth of knowledge and, and experience and pick their brain, use them to help us do our job. Um, you know, I, 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 I think that's that's crucial. Um, you know, just, you know, go, training. You, we can never get enough training. That's true. Um, I love training. I love I love teaching and I love learning. So. Um, when we get tired of learning something, something's wrong. Um, so I think it's extremely important for all of us every day to, to learn something that we didn't know the day before. Um, but I think those are probably two of the biggest things that we could do to improve ourselves. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think like going to conferences, right. It's obviously very important. And reaching out to folks that have been around in the industry, you know, that, you know, God knows how long they're, they're going to be around doing stuff. You know, it's like they, people retire, people stop doing things, people pass away, you know, guys like John LaJoy, you know, like John was a, you know, yeah. for those who knew him, you know, you could learn a thing or two just by having dinner with John LaJoy, you know? Well, yeah. He's going to talk about a hundred percent of the time, but you're going to walk away with, with, uh, knowledge, you know, uh, and guys like Alice Armistead, you know, that, that would go out and, you know, just what a kind man, you know, just looking to share, um, his experiences. Like, I, I, I think you bring up a good point, right? You, you get better by surrounding yourselves with people that do what you do and learn from them because maybe they're ahead of you or maybe you're equal as, as far as experience goes, but they got a, a little different way of doing things. Um, and, and that's, what's so awesome about the investigative community. There is no one way to do something. There's always different ways to look at things and you you're right in saying that you can always learn something. Uh, I mean, I'm 25 years in and I'm still learning how to, how to do stuff, you know, because I just can't do everything. Right. You know, it's kind of interesting that you say that, like you go, you, you mentioned Ellis and John and uh, I mean, I could, I could probably spend 20 minutes just naming, yeah, we could name, drop name, for, for name another name. <laughs> right. But, but when we go to a conference, whether it be, you know, Tally, Fally, Cali or NCISS or whatever, you look around the room and you see, you, you look at the people who are sitting at their table, just, just waiting, you know, hands folded across the table mm -hmm. and then you look out and you see other people that are just networking and and i'll tell you there's a big difference between those two types of people yeah. those people that are out networking they are learning they are they're like a sponge they're creating relationships they're meeting new people yeah. they're you know they're they're furthering their abilities and then you see the other people that just are kind of sitting back waiting uh, for Makes something sense. to happen. Makes no and, sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, you know what I'm talking about. We oh, see yeah. that every mm -hmm. time we go out to these conferences. Yeah. So then you see some guys that interact with like pistol pack and Paula and, you know, almost end up getting shot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were at the tally conference or, or Nally conference in San Antonio a few years ago, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God yeah. bless Pistol Pack and Paula. 
Oh man. You know what it's like to get your ear whipped by a whip. There you go, right? <laughs> and it's not your wife. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Crazy, man. Mm-hmm. Crazy. It, it, it's it's good times. And it's so important, you know. And I always um whenever I, I go to these events, I, I remember I just tally this year um in at Galveston, I think it was. Uh, I was at the conference there and it was I was excited to see a, a lot of like younger people that are just getting into the industry. You know, and I was like, okay, listen, don't sit around, don't be shy, go and talk to these people, uh, because this is, you know, this is how you're going to learn how to do what you do, you know, or learn how to do what you want to do, right? To to find your specialty, your 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 niche by by talking to people that are already doing it. And if folks that are going to the conference, ninety percent of them are, you know, they're they're going to talk to you. You know, there are some that just like, hey, I'm just here to hang out with my friends. There are a few of those. Um, but, um, you know, for the most part, you know, these are people that are, that have interest in, in, in the industry and making it better doing what we're doing. Right? Yeah. You know, you, you made me think of something. We talked a little bit ago about how technology has really furthered our abilities, enhanced our abilities. Well, technology can also damage our ability and that technology is like a Zoom conference right. where we do it in front of a computer in the comfort of our office or our home right. or our kitchen table. And we choose that instead of going to a conference where we're pressing the flesh with people, we're shaking right. hands, we're hugging people, we're we're able to, to talk one-on-one. So although Zoom conferences are good, in many respects, they can really change the way we learn and and develop relationships. Yeah. Um, so I would urge people to, when given the opportunity to go to a conference in person, do that yeah. as a last resort. Get on the Zoom if you can't make the conference. But yeah. anyway, that that. Yeah. So here, here's my take on that, man. My, my take on that is it shouldn't, you should never have a, oh, we're just going to do our conference virtually this year. Like it should never be that way. It should be in uh, an accompaniment, right? Yeah. Like we're yeah. doing our live conference here and then we're going to do a virtual one also like at some point during the year, right? One should never right. replace the other because they both serve different functions, right? Hey, we're recording this. It's Friday. 10 almost 11 o'clock in my time when i'm done with this i'm going to go jump on a a a, a, a virtual conference for for nally um and I, I love that i'm able to do that that you know i can pop in learn a little bit interact with with some people um and then you know tap out like that's good education wise but the social uh, part of it, it I'm, I'm, I won't have the opportunity to do that. And every kind of breakout room and happy hour room or whatever they have, it's good that they do it, but it's it's still not the same, you know. Um, you know, being able to just hang out and uh, you know, to me, I love going to different cities, cities I haven't been to. You know, it's there's excitement behind that. You know, there's energy yeah. behind that. It, it invigorates me. Um, and, and it's difficult to do, especially if you're you're a, a single business owner. You know, which is just you. Um, but the benefits far outweigh the cost to doing it and, um, tax deductible (laughs) if you're smart and, uh, you know, it's something that you really should do, um, you know, to make you better at at what you're doing. Yeah. Good point. Um, so we're going to wind down over here and, uh, Mark, it's so great to, to see you again and, and, uh, have you jump on and just share a little bit of, of your knowledge, um, on that. So the, the gist of everything is you know these murder investigations if it's not your wheelhouse find somebody um that that has an expertise in it and just pick their brain Uh, i'm not saying turn it over to them but but you definitely want to have a conversation with them about the right way to to handle these things yeah the other thing is you know there's there's so much material out there to review if you have a passion in doing this type of work um there's content all over the place um you know, there's teachings by uh, Mark and and others out there that, to to go about doing it. So, Mark, if folks wanted to get a hold of you, how would they find you? Uh, I have a, a website, Mark uh, Gillespie Investigations dot com. Um, my company name is Gillespie Forensics and Investigations. 
Uh, or they can call me 512-680-5851. They they can Google me, find me, uh, look look for me on the TALI, Texas Association of Licensed Investigators website, find an investigator. Um, Yeah, that's it. That's that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. And uh, again, this is a resource here. Folks, so part part of the the reason for the show is to 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 highlight folks like Mark that have a certain expertise and and do the things they do. So, um, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you checking out. Uh, we'll have a, another show uh, next week, and uh, stay safe out there. And uh, we'll catch everybody next week on the next show. Take care. Thanks for checking out the episode. Mark's a great guest and has a real heart for training and raising up our industry. A special thanks to the Slick Conference, Cross Tracks, Satellite Investigations, PI Institute of Education, and ORAP for sponsoring our show. So make sure you support our great supporters. Also, don't forget about investigatorstoolbox.com. You can type in version 2.0, 25% to save 50 bucks when you join. If you have a question or a comment about the show, just email Matt at MatthewS at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. He's a social media butterfly. We want your feedback to bring you the best shows possible, and we'll be back next week with a new show. So make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.